Good evening to everybody. And uh, for me too, it's a very important uh, moment to be speaking in a session chaired by two of my teachers, both Dr. Jagatram, Professor Jagatram and Professor Dogra. And uh, to have so many friends, uh, senior Shubhadra, all on, in this session, I am very delighted. And I thank AIOC for this opportunity. So let me uh, share my uh, talk here. So what's new in amblyopia? Well, I want to say nothing. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. So maybe a few things. Actually, quite a few things. But you know, um, Tabit ibn Kurra in 880 in Mesopotamia said you have to patch for amblyopia. And that's what we're doing now, that many, that many millennia later. But there are a few notable things that have happened in the last couple of years, and I am here to share those with you. So we ha still have these unusual situations. For example, you may have a 23-year-old engineer diagnosed recently as having anisometropic amblyopia, and you cannot use the regular pedic study guidelines for this gentleman. You may have an eight-year-old child who is intolerant to atropine and cannot patch because she has evening tuition and other tennis classes. So in such situations, we have to start looking for alternative therapies. And that is what I'm going to share with you today. And everything is based on restoring cortical plasticity and being able to reduce interocular suppression, which has received considerable attention as a therapeutic uh, strategy for amblyopia. And also recently, there is even more excitement saying, you know why we should only keep focusing on vision? Let us focus on binocularity. So that has also helped uh, design new treatments. So we first start off with behavioral treatments. So really what are these? So the first behavioral treatment I'm gonna to talk to you about is called perceptual learning. And perceptual learning is really a process whereby Practicing certain visual tasks repeatedly leads to improvement in visual performance. And the, it is marketed now in India as Revital, which is a non-invasive software-based therapy. And these are based on the principle of Gabor patches. And it ha basically helps in facilitating the neural connections at the cortical level. So uh, what are Gabor patches? There you can see those um, uh, contrast, black and white contrast images. They basically help not only in just improving vision, but also in improving contrast sens sensitivity. So basically they improve the efficiency of extracting stimulus by the visual cortex. And is it the same as CAM stimulator? Some of you may ask, but no, CAM is brief and passive, whereas perceptual learning is active and prolonged. So, uh, what you need to watch out for is this study. It's called AMPEL, which is Amblyopia Treatment Through Perceptual Training, coming from the University of Basel, and it's expected to publish its results uh, this year. But we had another uh, pilot study which showed that along with occlusion therapy, it seemed to really work. So now FDA approved revital vision is affected I mean, is, uh, is uh, available in India. And this is the uh, details of the, in the India distributor that I have shared uh, with you. Um, next, we move on to video gaming. Really, what is it? Playing action and non-action video game with a better eye occluded. Again, it seems to induce cortical plasticity and improve visual function. You, some of you might have heard of this prescription gaming called Digrush, which was again uh, FDA approved in the US. I came across so many apps that are available now on the Play Store and the Google Play uh, for uh, uh, you know, video gaming in amblyopia patients. But remember, it has an addiction potential. This is the next very important uh, therapy that many institutes have now started offering, which is called dicoptic training. What is it? And I'm going to just jump and talk to you about Binox, which is the available software. It is a novel cloud-based comprehensive binocular vision assessment and management. And we are more interested in the dicoptic amblyopia therapy, which is the Binox, Binox DAT. So the Binox actually has a diagnostic mode, and I'm not going to, uh, you know, uh, dwell on that. But what we are interested in is the dicoptic 
amblyopia therapy. And basically, the patient uses the anaglyph, which you can see the glasses for playing the games. Color saturation of the fellow is eye is kept low to facilitate binocular summation. Size and speed of the target improves based on the performance. And it's effective in patients with anisometropic amblyopia as long as it, they do not have a large uh, strabismic deviation. And this is what a Binox screen looks like. And they have several therapy protocols so that the children don't get bored as well. And um, they also have fusional convergence divergence exercises also included. Okay, and so it's really worth a try, especially because now the focus is not just on vision, but is also on binocular vision. And di dicoptic stimuli, Binox is available in several institutes and, and uh, patients have shown a lot of interest. Also in adult amblyopia, the Birch et al group from Dallas has uh, come up with a lot of publications if you're interested. Next, we move on to virtual reality. And again, this is available in India under the train name of Remed. And it's a, both a virtual rea reality with a dicoptic based game therapy. And uh, patient's performance can be monitored with the help uh, of uh, you know, feedback by, from, by the therapist. And this is what it kind of looks like. And you can change a lot of things. You can even change the strabismus uh, using virtual prisms. So strabismic amblyopia patients can also be included. And so if patient uses monocular perception, this is what it looks like. And then when they use a binocular percept uh, and play games on the VR, this is what it looks like. And so this is again, something that is very new, that is uh, an excellent alternative that, I, that is now available in India. I'm gonna talk about some really uh, a bit obscure uh, therapies. This one is the liquid crystal glasses, which there was a lot of excitement in 2014, 15. But $450 a pop, that is a bit expensive. Acupuncture, can you imagine our little babies we have getting an acupuncture needle? But jokes apart, there are lots of ongoing trials and there are uh, studies already shown that it is useful in anisometropic amblyopia. So monitored acupuncture. This was very intriguing, but it was published very recently. Physical therapy, where they found making the uh, adult amblyope, uh, occluding the amblyopic eye, and doing vigorous cycling seemed to improve vision, which lasted for a year. And I have no experience in these. This is just only for interest. But what is in the horizon? We already know about levodopa, CT choline. These are old news. And these have been shown not to be very effective in pediatric population by pedic studies. But what are, is now coming up are treatment of residual amblyopia with donapezil, which you know is a treatment for Alzheimer's. Uh, in 2019, there was a st study also with citalopram, which is a treatment for depression, where they combined it with patching and showed there was visual acuity improvement in adults with amblyopia. Remember that adult amblyopia is a big challenge. And uh, there is uh, very recently a sub anesthetic ketamine, which reactivates adult cortical plasticity, but we only have studies from mouse, uh, mice so far. So it would be interesting to see if this, uh, how this translates into uh, studies in human beings. Uh, for those of you who are interested in reading more, I would uh, suggest this excellent uh, uh, seminar, which is Emerging Therapies for Amblyopia, which has uh, been put together by the David Hunter Group uh, from uh, Boston. And in conclusion, I'd like to say uh, the new modalities of treatment for amblyopia, the alternative therapies and therapies for adult amblyopia are a fascinating area of research and are now available for both adults and children in India. And I thank you once again for this honor, this opportunity and your patient hearing.